Okay, in today's video, I am going to go over, I believe it's four different examples for calculating activity as it relates to radioactive decay. Now, before we do that, please don't forget in the bottom right-hand corner of this video, there is the subscribe button. Please click on that button, subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. And also, please leave me a comment in the comment section below what you can think about this video. So let's get started. Like I said, we're going to do four different videos. I also made some videos explaining what activity is uh, as it relates to radioactive decay, and you can link to those up here in the upper right-hand corner with that I button right there. But in this video, we have a sample, a material that contains one milligram of iodine-131, and it gives us the information that iodine-131 has a half-life of 800, not 800, but 8.02 days. And we want to know the number of atoms of iodine-131 that we initially have. And you want to know the activity of that sample in Becquerel's, okay? We're going to do two things. First, in order to figure out the activity, we have to know how many atoms we have. So this is basically, I think maybe there's a little bit more chemistry and stoichiometry kind of like. But we have one milligram, that's one times ten to the third grams, minus three grams. And we're going to convert that using the molar mass, so we know how many moles we have. We know molar mass of iodine-131, which you just look up somewhere, would be 130.91 grams. The grams cancel, and we're left with the fact that we have 7.64 times 10 to the minus 6 moles. So 1 milligram is 7.64 times 10 to the 6 moles of iodine. That's the number of moles. We know 1 mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and that means that we have 4.60 times 10 to the 18 atoms of iodine. Now using that information and this equation right here, we can figure out the activity. This equation says that the activity at time zero, and this is kind of the initial activity, is equal to the decay constant, which we'll figure out what the decay constant is just in a moment, times the number of radioactive nuclei we have at that initial time zero. And we figured that out on the previous slide. That's why I have here N zero equals 4.6 times 10 to the 18 atoms. Now, we need to figure out what the decay constant is. The decay constant is simply calculated as the natural log of 2 divided by the half-life of the material, and we were given that the half-life is 8.02 days. So we can divide the natural log of 2.8 by 8.02 days. But when we figure out the activity in Becquerel's, it needs to be in seconds, the number of decays per second. So we have to convert the days into seconds, and we take that days 802 times 24, because there's 24 hours a day and 60 minutes an hour, 60 seconds in a minute, and we get that that works out to be 6.93 times 10 to the fifth seconds. And then we can substitute that in, and we know the natural log of 2, if you look on your calculator, natural log of 2 is 0 0.693. We divide these two numbers, and we come up with that. The decay constant is 1.0 times 10 to the minus 6 <clears throat> s seconds to the minus 1, or 1 over s seconds to the minus one. Now we can plug that information into our equation because we know now N zero. We figured out the decay constant. Now we can figure out the activity at that time zero for that number of atoms. We simply plug those numbers in 1.6 times 10 to the minus six um, seconds to the minus one times 4.6 times 10 to 18, which is the number of radioactive nuclei that we have. And that gives us that the activity it's 4.60 times 10 to the 12 becquerels, or becquerels is the unit for decays per second, and that is the activity for one milligram of iodine-131, which has a half-life of 8.02 days, okay? So that's question number one. We're going to go over the next one, which says a sample of strontium-90 has an initial activity of 12 millicuries. Curies, which we'll talk about in a moment, is kind of an older term for activity, and now we use Becquerel's. So uh, we're going to convert from millicuries or from curies to Becquerel's in just a moment. So we have the strontium-90 sample that has an activity, and we want to know what is the half-life. No, we want to know what will be the activity of the sample after 87 years, and we want to give our answer in Becquerel's. All right, because we give them curies, we want to convert. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to write down we have 87 years, and we're going to look up the half-life of strontium. The half-life of strontium is it's about 28.9 or 28.89. I rounded it to 29 just to make the problem a little easier. 
a little more straightforward, you just get the point. We can divide 87 by 29. We have 87 years and we have a half-life of 29. That means we have exactly three half-lives, okay? So we have exactly three half-lives. We know for each half-life, we're gonna lose half of our sample. So we're gonna figure out what we have after three half-lives. But first, we're gonna convert from uh, Curie's to uh, decays per second, or this would be the same thing as Becquerel's. One Curie is equal to 3.70 times 10 to the 10th uh, decays per second. And that comes from, I believe, when Pierre and Marie were originally doing their uh, research and they discovered radium, and it's the activity for one gram of radium-226, and that was kind of the standard they used at that time. And we have recently switched to Becquerel's, Henri Becquerel. The three of them won the Nobel Prize for the work they did in radioactivity in 1903. So we're gonna convert 12 millicuries, 12 times 10 to the minus three curies. This is our conversion factor. One curie is 3.7 times 10 to the 10th decays per second. And that gives us that the activity of uh, the strontium-90, which is in 12 millicuries, is equal to 4.44 times 10 to the 8th decays per second, or you could say this is now Becquerel. So this is, you could change this to Becquerel's if you'd like to. So that's the activity. That's our initial activity, all right? In Becquerel's, we have three half-lives. We know after one half-life, we're going to lose half of our sample. We lose half of our sample has decayed, and that means the activity is going to go down by half also. You have half as many radioactive nuclei. You have half as much activity. So we take this number, divide by two, and you get this number. That's one half-life. We're going to divide again by two. We get this number. We're going to divide again by two, and we get this number because each time we lose half. So the activity, this is our answer right here. This is the activity in Becquerel's of uh, strontium-90, which originally had an activity of 4.44 times 10 to the A Becquerel's, or 12 millicuries. And you'll notice each time we lose half, so we go from the um, original amount, we had half, and then we had a quarter, and then we had an eighth. So this number is just an eighth of this number. Okay, so that's the activity after three half lives. All right, problem number three. <clears throat> we have a we have the half life of um, no. This time we want to figure out what is the half life of strontium forty, and we have one point seven zero times ten to the nineteenth nuclei of potassium forty, which is radioactive, and that corresponding number of that number of radioactive nuclei would have a corresponding activity of three hundred becquerels. So in this case, we want to figure out the activity. We know the uh, original activity, which would be AT. The corresponding number of radioactive nuclei at the same time would be NT. And therefore, we have to figure out the half-life. Now, this is the decay constant. And this is how we calculate the decay constant. And you can see the decay constant has the half-life in it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this term and substitute it into this equation for this term. And then I can solve for the half-life. So the activity at T at time t is equal to the natural log of two, which I got from here, times nt, the number of radioactive nuclei at that same time, divided by the half-life. I can just switch these two values algebraically, and I get that the half-life is equal to the natural log of two times nt divided by at, and I can simply now just plug the values in. The natural log of two, you have that on your calculator, or you can figure that out on your calculator. You could also figure it out at 0 0.693, I believe. This is the number of radioactive nuclei, this is the corresponding activity, and therefore we get that the half-life is 3.93 times 10 to the 16 seconds. Now we could leave it like that, but that looks like it might be a few years, so I'm just going to convert that number of seconds into years. One year, you can figure out, is uh, 3.15 times 10 to the 7th seconds, and that means that potassium-40 has a half-life of 1.25 times 10 to the 9 years. That's kind of long. 1.2 thousand millions, billions of years. Okay? So we figured it out because we originally knew that we had a certain number of radioactive nuclei, and we knew that the corresponding activity, and we could do that using that equation. Okay, last one. This one's maybe a little bit more involved. Um, yeah, so we're going to try this one. We have the activity of astatine uh, 211, and the sample originally is... Um, at 
Time equals zero. The original time is 400 becquerels. Two hours later, the activity has been reduced to 330 because it's decaying. And you want to know what's the half-life of that element, of that isotope. So now this is the equation we can use to figure this out. Once again, we want to know what is the half-life. Once again, this equation doesn't have the half-life. But once again, this equation has the decay constant. We can substitute this value in here and then solve for the half-life. Okay, this is the uh, um, uh, original A0 is the uh, activity at time zero. This is the time activity at some time later. This is also the time between these two. This is the different, the time between these two activities. This is this T right here. And this is the decay constant. We can substitute that in. So let's do that. You gotta remember this is E, Euler's number, raised the power of minus the decay constant times t, so I substitute this value in. So this is e raised to the power of minus the natural log of 2 times t um, divided by the half-life. Okay, so this is what we're going to be solving for, this half-life right here in this equation. So first thing we're going to do is divide each side by a0, and we get that that, and that equals at divided by a0 equals e raised to the power of this term. Now, you might be thinking, well, how can we get that t out of there? It's not that complicated. There's one little trick. You can just take the natural log of both sides. So you take the natural log of the left side. And then, if you know a little bit of math, that the natural log of e raised to any power is simply that power. So we raise e, take the natural log of this term, we just get the power, which is minus the natural log of 2 times t divided by the half-life. Now, there's a couple, of course, there's different ways you can do this algebraically. I like to substitute the values in first. I think it's a little easier. So I'm going to substitute the natural log of 330 divided by 400. You got to do this first and then take the natural log. It's not the natural log of each of them. You take 330 divided by 400 and then take the natural log. And that's equal to the natural log of 2, which is, we have that from our previous term. And then the time is 2 hours divided by the half-life. And we don't have any units. We have just this unit here. And that's in hours. And we can substitute that and solve for that the half-life is 7.2 hours. Okay? I have this term right here, which is what I get from taking the natural log of 330 divided by 400. It's negative. This is negative over here. And I have divide by the half-life. And I can just switch these terms again. So I got this by taking minus 1.39 divided by this term, which is also negative, and I get a positive time in hours because my only unit left here is hours. Okay, so there you go. There's a four relatively straightforward, but you know, that's good to know how to work with activity and radioactive decay. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please do all the following four things. Subscribe to my channel, get all my excellent physics, chemistry, and math videos. Give me a thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice comment positive comment in the comment section below, please. Thank you very much. And don't forget, sharing is caring. Share this video with all of your friends. Show them just how much you care. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.